Hey, this is Paul with MakeUseOf.com, and for the past few weeks, I've been using the MSI Crosshair 15 Rainbow Six Extraction Edition. And if you like these kind of videos, of course, be sure to subscribe because we do have a lot of other laptop reviews coming out very soon, as well as a couple of desktops too, some exciting ones. So be sure to stay tuned for those. And MSI is known for giving you excellent performance, cooling, and value in a variety of configurations. This is no exception. That said, there are two main reasons why this laptop stands out from MSI's confusing lineup of other gaming laptops, as well as the competition. For the most part, a lot of gaming laptops, especially those in the budget category, look mostly the same. They have that all black design and you can't really distinguish one from the other. Even within MSI's own lineup, they've got the Pulse, the Katana, the Vector. And with the Pulse series, it actually shares the same chassis as the Crosshair 15, which also has the same chassis as last year's Crosshair 15, which had the 11th gen i7 processor. What's different, of course, this year with the Rainbow Six Extraction Edition and even the non-Extraction Edition, which I'll talk about a little bit later, they share this new color scheme. It has this nice yellow gradient that goes from yellow to green to black to match the rest of the keyboard deck. And then you have a couple other yellow icons and logos. We also have the WASD in yellow. It's a bit semi-transparent, so that's kind of cool. Not something you typically see with your keys. And then you'll find React written in bold on the mouse track, and then some other text on the right-hand side as well. We have the logo on the back, which actually has like an aerial map I believe from one of the maps of the game. And even with the lid closed, you see a little bit of the yellow from the back of the keyboard deck sticking out from the back there. And what's cool is MSI isn't actually charging you a premium to get this new color scheme. And so if you're tired of those boring all black designs that you see with basically all gaming laptops, especially again at the budget price point, this helps it stand out. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, and I'll get into this later on in the review, it's an excellent choice if you're looking for the best value RTX 3070 laptop with an i7 processor. Right now, it's one of the best priced out there. The only one cheaper than it is actually another MSI laptop. Even right away before you unbox it, its packaging is also really exciting. You don't have the same boring old brown box that you typically get with most MSI and other gaming laptops. The excitement carries over a little bit with the contents. Aside from the laptop, you also get a cool bundle that includes this mouse pad, and this mouse. There's a good chance if you've been gaming for any amount of time, you probably already have a mouse and mouse pad that you like. I would only really say this appeals to people who are really big fans of the Rainbow Six game, and they wanna carry over that theme into their peripherals too. This mouse isn't going to be the most enjoyable to use, I'm assuming for a lot of other players too. Just its size and feel feels a little bit cheap and just ergonomically, I'm more used to my favorite mouse, the MX Master 3 by Logitech. It just holds my thumb a little bit better. I can grip around the mouse a little bit better too. Whereas with this, I just felt like my thumb especially was just slipping off and I didn't really have a way to grip this too well. The mouse pad, again, is all right, but if you're coming from a much larger mouse pad, again, like I am, this will feel a little bit small, but for taking this on the go, because I did game with this on a few trips, it was nice to have the setup all together. And for people who walked by who saw me gaming with this, they thought the setup was kind of cool again, because everything matches. The bundle, of course, includes the Rainbow Six Extraction Deluxe Edition Game 2. That's probably going to be the biggest selling feature if you opt for this bundle. But as I'll say, if you're like me and you're not even that big of a fan of the game, I mean, I played it for maybe an hour at most and then I got bored of it. There are a couple freebies, they're not costing you anything, and again, as I'll share, there are no other laptops, bundle or no bundle, that really come close to this in terms of price, except again, for that one other MSI laptop. So this review unit comes with the i7 12700H, it comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM, it comes with the one terabyte SSD, and it comes with the RTX 3070. The base model of this comes with the RTX 3060 and 500 gigabyte SSD. It starts at 1599. Interestingly though, Normally it would be about $200 to upgrade to the RTX 3070, but that also automatically bumps you up to one terabyte SSD, which for a lot of people in itself might be worth it. But at least on Newegg and at the time of this review, there are frequently rebates. So you can actually get this for an additional $100 instead of $200. And that alone is a must have upgrade. Like it's a no brainer. You should definitely opt for 
the one terabyte with the 3070 if it's only $100. What's more though, it also bumps up the battery inside. Instead of just a three cell 53.5 watt hour battery, it bumps it up to a four cell 90 watt hour battery. Yes, the GPU is gonna be a little bit more power hungry, but for day-to-day -day tasks, when you're unplugged and not using the GPU as much, that could potentially mean longer battery life. So that could also be a worthwhile upgrade. And I actually do highly recommend following along with the article because I do give specific examples and price point analysis comparing this to some of the other competition. So if you're interested in learning why I think this is the best value laptop, as well as some of my other recommendations for this unit, check out that article on makeuseof.com. So like we were saying, the chassis itself is pretty much the same as the past few models. What's new with this year's model though, is the display. This is a 2560 by 1440 display, and it's also bumped up its refresh rate from 144 hertz to 165. This is an IPS panel with a 2.5 millisecond response time. What's interesting is MSI didn't opt for the 16 by 10 aspect ratio that we've seen with some of their other recent laptops, including the Creator 15, which I recently reviewed with makeuseof.com. A lot of other laptops, gaming ones included, are switching over to the 16 by 10 aspect ratio. The real estate is definitely available there, and if they just made their bezels a little bit thinner at the top and bottom, they could definitely do it. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw this with next year's model. The laptop also comes in an i9 variant, the 12900H. Base RAM is 16 gigabytes, but it can be upgraded up to 64. DDR4 3200 RAM. It has two M.2 NVMe SSD slots. You have Intel Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and killer gigabyte LAN. The keyboard has 1.7 millimeters of travel, which is good to type on, but a large portion of the middle keys do experience flex when applying any bit of pressure. The G2K keys have some of the most flex that I've noticed on a gaming laptop in a very long time. It's not necessarily enough to ruin the gaming experience, but it does remind you that this is a more budget laptop. You also have a number pad on the right, but it's a little bit cramped. It and the enter key both feel a little bit small with its size, that kind of makes sense. MSI does do a good job, however, with its FN options, including volume control, play pause, screen brightness, enabling an aim overlay. With your down key, that's where you can actually add aim sights, increasing the fan manually for a fan boost using up and more. The keyboard is backlit with three levels of brightness controlled by the function eight key. You don't have the same RGB effects or per key lighting that you'd get with more expensive gaming laptops. The keyboard instead is divided into four different color lighting zones, yellow, blue, green, and a white blue at the bottom. Sure, it's a little bit more exciting than an all-white backlit keyboard, especially with matching the rest of the color scheme of this laptop, but again, this is another area where the Crosshair 15 had to make a little bit of sacrifices to keep its price low. The trackpad is also decent and remains unchanged from the previous generation of this laptop. You've got the two click zones which can be activated almost up to the top of the trackpad itself. As we can expect being that this is a thicker laptop, you get a decent selection of full-size ports. On the left, starting from the back, there's the DC charging port, USB type A 3.2 and USB 2.0. It's a little bit odd that we still have 2.0 on a 2022 machine. On the right, we've got RJ45 and a full-size HDMI that supports up to 4K 60 frames per second, USB type C 3.2 and USB type A 3.2. Lastly, you've got a combo headphone mic jack. Unlike some other gaming laptops, the USB type C does not support charging. It's also worth noting despite its size, an SD card reader is absent. MSI's Cooler Boost 5 has been doing a good job at keeping their laptops cool under heavy GPU loads. Even when running games on ultra settings, it has two fans in the rear to exhaust its six heat pipes. It manages to keep the laptop cool and usually it hovers around 75 degrees Celsius for most games. That said, the fans are quick to turn on and when gaming, they're extremely prominent. For additional cooling performance, you can toggle the high fan speed using function and the up arrow key to set its fans to max RPM. You can also decrease that. Needless to say, that's even louder, and I would highly recommend using headphones while gaming with this laptop, even at its regular fan speeds. You'll find the exhaust on the rear and the left side of the laptop, while fresh air is sucked in from the bottom. There's a slight elevation to its feet, which allow the air to flow smoothly into the system. If you're right-handed while gaming, you probably won't feel the warmth as much. Your mouse hand remains cool as there are no vents on that side. Your left hand will feel a little bit warmer around the WASD keys, but it's significantly cooler compared to the center and top of the keyboard deck. 
touching these areas for a longer period of time can be a little bit uncomfortable, but for most gamers just using WASD, it's not that bad. Things get a little bit more interesting when you go to MSI's website and you search for the Crosshair. There's the Crosshair 15 Rainbow Six Extraction Edition, which we have, and there's also the Crosshair 15. They look almost identical, and one doesn't have the Rainbow Six name in the title, but there are a few differences. The non-extraction edition has a regular MSI logo on its top lid. I'm not entirely sure why MSI decided to separate these two models as the color scheme aside from that is largely the same, and even much of their marketing online has the same Rainbow Six assets, just without the official model name and the title. These two laptops, as well as the GL66 which I mentioned earlier, have the same core specs. Their I.O., memory, storage, screen, webcam, speakers. They're all available with the same processor too, either the i7-12700H or the i9-12900H, and they even have the same GPU, the RTX 3060 or 3070. But the Crosshair 15, the B12U specifically, currently seems to be the only model of the three that also offers the RTX 3070 Ti as a GPU choice. And so if you do want that little bit of performance boost that the RTX 3070 Ti has, that's only available in the non-branded Crosshair 15. Also, that model might be region specific as I don't believe it's available in the US. Variations of the MSI Crosshair 15 are rather limited, but they do offer great value, especially compared to similarly spec competing models. Again, check out the article if you wanna learn more about that. But I will share one important point here. The model I'm reviewing, which again comes with the i7-12700H, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and the one terabyte NVMe SSD, and the RTX 3070, goes for $1799. When you search online for gaming laptops with these same specs, this is going to be the cheapest one available. The only cheaper option I could find with a similar configuration is actually in the MSI Pulse GL66 that I keep bringing up. Amazon currently has a crazy deal, and I don't know how long this will last, where for the same specs, but with a smaller 512 gigabyte SSD, it goes for just $14.49. It's normally apparently priced at $15.34, which is still far cheaper than anything else available for these specs. It does appear that this model only has a full HD 144Hz display instead of the newer 2560 1440 165Hz display that we get with the new Crosshair 15. For some gamers, especially those gaming on the go a lot, it might be a deal breaker, but if you're on a tighter budget, or you plan on using an external display anyways, it's hard if not impossible to beat. I will say if you're willing to forego the pop of color that comes with the Rainbow Six branding and the other free goodies that come with this bundle, the MSI GL66 is one of the best performance gaming laptops you can currently buy. I ran a few benchmarks that I'll share starting with some games. All games are run at their ultra or best graphics presets at 1920 by 1080 with uncapped frames and VSync turned off. With its i7-12700H, the RTX 3070, and 16 gigabytes of RAM, you can run every game at max settings and get at least 100 frames per second. Overwatch doesn't have a built-in benchmark, but you can get around 145 to 195 frames per second depending on the map and the amount of action happening on screen. And if you want to really take advantage of that 165 hertz display, of course you can drop your settings a little bit too. Switching to Cinebench R23, the scores are on par with other systems with these specs until we get to the multi unplug score. There's a pretty significant performance drop when you unplug the Crosshair 15. I tried messing around with its settings both in Windows Power Settings and the MSI's own battery and power modes and set everything to max performance. Despite my attempts, I was unable to get the laptop to perform any better when it was unplugged. So having reviewed this, MSI remains one of the best choices if you're on a budget and you want to get the most performance for your dollar. The new black and yellow color scheme does breathe a little bit of fresh air, especially considering that this chassis it's been around for a little bit now and, you know, it's not the prettiest, it's not the thinnest, and it's not the lightest gaming laptop out there. But for the money, with the exception of that GL66 that we talked about, it's one of the best value laptops you can get right now. So thank you again for checking out this review. Let us know your thoughts about this gaming laptop in the comments down below. If you have any questions, you can let us know there too. We have a lot of other gaming and laptop reviews coming out very soon on our channel, so if you're interested in learning more about those, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. And until the next one, we'll catch you later.